to record your videos directly as one take, then this video is going to really be helpful for you. I'm going to explain all the settings you need to know to get a good quality video recorded onto your hard drive, which you can use to directly upload to YouTube. Or if you decide to edit, you can edit in a different video editing software. I did explain in my last video, you don't need to video edit it if you want to take it all as one take. But let me take it to my screen and quickly show you OBS and how you want to get the best settings from recording. So in OBS, we've covered this in previous tutorials and kind of the episode chunks I've done. Let me show you the main menu. So in file settings is the main menu you're interested in, which is this one here. You'll see there's a few tabs here. I've got a general, I've got stream, I've got output, I've got video, audio, and then I've got video. So in these, the general tab I don't normally touch is a few options there. Stream tab I do look at because I YouTube live stream. So you can put your streamer key in there from your live stream dash. So if you go to YouTube live studio and do a live stream, it gives you a key. You can put that in there and then use OBS to control your cameras. I do that quite frequently. So apart from the stream, I have an output screen. The output gives you a few options. I normally choose, you normally get a simple mode here. I choose advanced mode, which gives me more options. In the streaming settings, it shows you what scale output is it. I do 1080p video. I have an intense graphics card, which helps the encoding of my video. So in this drop down, you might not have this NVIDIA graphics card. I do. I use that. So when the video is recording on my hard drive, it's using the CPU, the central processing unit of my computer, as well as my graphics card CPU. So it lightens the load on my CPU so I can still do intensive tasks. Um, further down here, you can see the bit rate when I'm streaming is only 5000 kilobits per second. You can make that higher if your quality of your internet is good. My preset here, I put on quality, not max quality, but I put it on quite high because I want that to get a good solid encoding done. If you put it lower, there's a bit more time it takes and a bit more processor speed it uses. And as the it gets uploaded onto YouTube, the video quality won't be as good. And apart from that recording, you can see here in this up, I'd put recording option, I do a path for my folders. All my recording files, if I press start recording, as you see there, then that records to that location. And I've got an MP4 file here, which I select from this drop down recording format. You can have these other formats. I choose MP4 because it's easier for me to handle. So that's that screen. Audio, you can see I have 256 kilobit bit rate for my uh, audio. So it sounds like nice. Hopefully you can hear the audio and you can tell me if it sounds nice or not. Um, and replay buffer, I don't normally enable that. This is if you're live streaming, you have like a replay buffer where you can rewind and watch more of the video. Audio wise here, you can see I have the simple rate, sample rate at 44.1 kilohertz and stereo. Uh, apart from that, the main settings I normally change is in video because you'll see the base canvas I have set up as 1080p video. If your computer is not too high intense and you're not getting good video recording or streaming and it's missing rates, what you want to do is change that to 720p and see how it copes. I did a separate video about how to check if your computer can cope with live streaming and what kind of computer you need for live streaming or recording video. Either way, live or recording, you're using the same amount of power via OBS. Then I have a common frames per second. I normally do 30 frames a second because I don't do any gaming. So I don't need it to be high 30 frame, uh, 60 frames a second or anything like that. And my normal uh, downscale filter is by cubic sharpening scale. I've left that as that. That's nothing fancy. Something you want to think about is hotkeys. You'll see in my hotkeys, I have wide shot, which is referring to my scene. I have a key in there, an F1 key. The fourth word is your. What that's good for is if I press F1 now, that hotkey means I can switch over to this camera. If I press F2, it switches over to that camera. So that's what the hotkeys offers. You could put a, a key in there, whichever key you press while the live stream is running, you can actually switch to that camera or scene or desktop or whatever you're showing on that scene. Um, advanced options there, there's a few things there to look at, but I don't normally mess with that. So I normally do that and that covers my settings for recording video. So when I do start recording, this will create a file and that file is ready for me to use. And if you followed my uh, guidance in the previous video that I spoke about, about how to make a video in OBS without having to use video editing software or making OBS your video editing software. It's really important to have the right settings set up when you're recording the videos. In this next video, I explain what the best settings are for OBS recording multiple camera feeds.